Sweet. Hello, everybody. Oh, dude, we're doing it. I'm so excited. I have butterflies in my tummy. More like little pterosaurs, I think I would say. <laughs> <laughs> we get to draw a dinosaur for everybody. This and is awesome. We get to paint the dinosaur for everyone. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, I know that we only have just a couple of you with us right now, but Casey and I will go ahead and wait uh, for about a couple minutes and see how many people log in with us. I know some of you are joining us from across the country as well. Uh, we're super excited. Uh, just like our past to draw and paint, we've got the comment section. Hi, Ryan. Mr. Bruton. Oh, What's so up, excited Brody? to have you, dude. We got Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Hello. Oh, yes, yeah, Seattle. Thanks for the cold. We appreciate it. I know. It's about time. It is about time. Oh, man. But yeah, like Ben said, we're going to give a couple minutes to let kind of people trickle in. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing a How Do You Draw Dinosaurs, and not a How To. That is available now on our new YouTube, though. So if you would like to watch those videos from our past two live streams, <laughs> you can go to Bros Brothers Productions on YouTube and watch those videos. That's right. You heard me right. So but this is going to be a how do you draw dinosaurs. Uh, basically, I'll give you guys some deets when we get a couple more people bouncing in here. I know. Excited to see Jack's here too. Heck yeah, he is. Hi, Jack friend. Jack we love friend. you guys. But, yeah, as you can tell, Ben is super excited, uh, and I'm super excited. We've been looking forward to doing this all week, especially because we're just going to be drawing dinosaurs. You know, the one thing that Ben and I love to do most. The most. And, of course, <laughs> talk to you guys and hang out well, with always. you guys. I hope everyone's doing well. Right? Yeah. Well, we're not hearing Actually, anything from them. We just hear crickets. Yeah. <laughs> we were sitting here. It depends. Like tonight, we could be sitting. Actually, I think we might be hanging out in the Cretaceous tonight because the three choices are from the Cretaceous. So I think we're hearing some Cretaceous crickets tonight. Cretaceous crickets. That sounds like a chocolate yeah. bar. A Cretaceous cricket. Cretaceous I would eat it. crickets. I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, they are starting to put like cricket protein in everything. <laughs> mm. Sounds yummy to me. Yeah. Well, let me go ahead and post some stuff here real quick in the chat. If you guys chat aren't screen. already following us on Instagrammy, we've got a lot of ins <laughs> information -y on it. We've got that awesome enter to win a 3D printed T-Rex skull. Casey got a new 3D printer and we've just been using it to the point it may go extinct itself. So. That's okay. That means that it's done its work. Yes. So. Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, 3D printer, for the wonderful Tyrannosaurus score. Uh, I, I just wish we could plug it into our head and actually make it work. That'd I don't know, awesome. dude. Like, at that point, that, we might just kill that machine altogether if we did that. Especially if both you and I were attached to it. Ooh. One machine. Yeah, I think the things we could do. Yeah. Oh, Courtney said she'd eat the Cretaceous Cricket chocolate bar. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I think we need to, to market this. So if anybody knows anybody, make sure to uh, follow up with the Bros Brothers on Cretaceous Crickets. Yeah. Yes, I'll take them. You got it. Better be big, big crickets too. It's going to be awesome. All right. We'll get started here in just a moment. Give us one more minuto. Yeah. But again, tonight what we're doing is uh, how do the Bros Bros create a dino for Dino November? And I hope everybody's been loving the dinos for Dino November. I know I have, Casey, and it's been a ton of fun working with you on this, uh, challenging Ooh. myself to speed paint, which is pretty awesome. There's a lot of great Ooh. tutorials out there on how to speed paint if anybody's interested, but we may do something like that on our Facebook Live in the future, so. Heck yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, that's the point, you know, we're here to share all these wonderful, wonderful things that we've created, and we just uh, really love doing it and feel like we're just gonna continue to do this. Well, yeah, like, so, like our core values say, you know, create, inspire, believe. 
All right, well, with that, guys, um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, again, my name's Ben, Bros Brothers Productions, and who's joining me this evening? But the... Well, that's me, the guy who sounds just like Ben, so Casey weird. Bros of Bros Brothers Productions. And uh, like Ben had mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing a How Do You Draw Dinosaurs, Casey and Ben Bros. So tonight... I'll go ahead and just begin, if you don't mind, Ben. Do you think that you can, you know? Yeah, let me go ahead okay. and post the poll. Oh, well, yes, we got to definitely do that. Yeah, all right. So the lines are open, folks. You have a chance. We're going to let you vote, Casey. Throw, throw oh. it in there. So number one, we've got Quirhosaurus which is a Cretaceous Stegosaurus, which is unusual. Is it Therosaurus? I think it's a maybe Wenosaurus or a Whosaurus. A what no. A Whatosaurus? It's a Whereosaurus. Oh, a Therosaurus. Okay, so it's number one. <laughs> you got number one, Whereosaurus. Number two, Gorgosaurus. This guy was a Tyrannosaurid, also from the Cretaceous. But he lived a little farther north. He wasn't part of, you know, the Montana, Wyoming range. This guy was trotting around in the uh, Arctic Circle area, hunting down large hadrosaur dinosaurs. So Gorgosaurus, which means, I believe it has a dreadful lizard, like a gorgon. Oh, are you so kidding me? With those legs, I would say it's a Gorgosaurus. Oh, I get it? it Guys, this is going to be horrible all night long. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, see? A gorgeous source. A gorgeous source. All right, the votes are coming in, Case. They're coming in hot. Sweet. Oh, and then number three, we have one of my favorites, honestly. Uh, this is Euplocephalus. What a big word to say. Huge. This guy was also a Cretaceous dinosaur, and he was part of the Onkylosaurid family. So... You'd find him walking around with that big old club tail. He's got armor to the eyelids, just like an ankylosaurus. Or and they were actually really big. Like ankyloranosaurus? Okay, don't. Okay, really I'm getting really okay. bad with the corny jokes. That's all right. You know, if we're going to tie in some of your favorite stuff, it might as well be Star Wars and dinosaurs. <laughs> Star dinosaurs? <laughs> yes, oh, Denise. Uh, it's going to be a long night with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's oh, here too. Oh, All right. I know. Look at everybody's here. So if you guys haven't voted already, go ahead and click on that poll. Number one, Wherosaurus. Number two, Gorgosaurus. And three, Euplocephalus. Yeah. So go ahead and slam those votes in there. I've only got and four, then... and there are nine people viewing. So if you guys want to be a part of this, you better throw your vote in. Yeah, these ones really count. They really do. And we and will then, not be honestly, doing a recount. Yeah, the more we get, the more, you know, we know what you guys want us to draw, and I will draw you a sweet dinosaur. All right, I'm still waiting on about two votes, but we're going we're gonna to close the lines here momentarily so Casey can get started on whipping up a Huerasaurus. Oh, or a, gosh. Yep. <laughs> Or a, a gorgeous story. Gorgeous <laughs> Or a Uplo. What is that? Alice. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's tough. a tongue twister. We, we've been up <laughs> since about 5.15 this morning on a sunrise hike. Shelby insisted, but we did it. And it was gorgeous. We did. It was... And we talked about dinosaurs as well. Yeah, it's just kind of a normal <laughs> thing to talk about. All right, Ben. One more minute. All right. One more minute. Sure get those votes Shelby in. says right. one wins or this whole thing was rigged <laughs> yeah well you're, you're just gonna have to deal with it we're not gonna do a recount <laughs> awesome looks like Olivia's Mama, here. here awesome yep Olivia all right strange ways strange ways here what's up all right thank you strange ways oh my gosh we're so excited to have you guys uh, here. again pterosaur is in my tummy right now we also have a middle of a raptor t-rex battle oh i think we managed to make through it so oh there's a tyrannosaur we're used to hearing those all right buddy well that's it the poll all lines are closed folks and the winner is drum roll casey 
Was that a bigger bigger or a drum roll? <laughs> Thank you. It's U O plus cephalus. Yay, if I said that right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll you know we'll make sure that we pull in Gorgosaurus and Clarosaurus at some point. But don't worry your pants. Tonight we're going to be doing Euplosophallus, this amazing armored tank of a dinosaur. I'm really excited to be doing this, guys. Hi, Shayla. There's our niece out there. Nick, thank oh, you for yeah. voting for three. It has officially won. Yes. So we are going to start drawing this guy. Wow, that's a really wonky smiley face. <laughs> This is the winner! Yay! Yay. It's like a dinosaur Thank hand. Thumbs voting. up. Excellent. Number one. You guys, we need stickers that for the Facebook Bros Brothers Live said I voted. All right, I voted for you, Plos Palace. Excellent. If you didn't, that's okay. We're not going to judge you. <laughs> so, all right. Hi, Vivian. Awesome. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Ben, does that work for you? Yes, it does. <laughs> All right, Excellent. so while Casey's drawing, oh, thank you, Vivian, for letting us know Trent did a drum roll. Casey's <laughs> did suffice. <laughs> Ryan, you could have done a way better drum roll. Um, so while so Casey's true. drawing, uh, I'm going to just kind of chat while we're going through here. It's going to be a back and forth conversation. So again, if you guys have any comments about <clears throat> anything or you'd like to know something more about a dinosaur, I am on the line. Um, if there's something you guys want to know about when it comes to dinosaurs, we can find something out for you. Uh, Casey and I are very fortunate, as are our two other brothers, to have two parents, not one, but two, that yeah, are geologists. Yes, it's pretty awesome. You need two parents for, well, generally that to work, I guess. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you tell them, Ben. You tell them. Yes. Uh, that they, they're both geologists, and we fell in love with rocks as tadpoles. And uh, yes, we were tadpoles, so that makes our parents frogs, I guess, because you need two frogs in order to make tadpoles. But <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, Casey and I got into this a long time ago, and I don't know about you, Casey, but when it came around to that part in your life where you're being judged um, in high school. Uh, dinosaurs weren't that big of a thing. Like, nobody liked dinosaurs. Of course, we did. Hi, Natalie! It's so good to see you. All, all of our high school friends are here who didn't judge us. <laughs> <laughs> or didn't just, you know, we're very kind of us. I, yeah, that's true. No, they, they still love us. They're still here. Um, uh, so, the dinosaur thing. Um, I when, You know, when I was in high school, I kind of was like, I don't know if I should let people know that I like dinosaurs. I, I like girls, and I like football and all that stuff. So this was kind of like a hidden thing. And then when we got into college, um, you know, I went back to school to get into the uh, paleontological world. And it, it was just far too easy for me. So then I jumped ship to graphic designing, which is kind of funny because at one point I didn't want to design things. And then I left school because I was just like, I don't know what I want to do. And here we are now obsessing over dinosaurs and painting and drawing them. So I guess what I'm rambling on about is with all the dinosaurs in my tummy right now, guys, honestly, do what you love the most. And for Casey and I, um, it's dinosaurs, it's Star Wars, it's Pokemon, it's pretty much everything a five-year-old loves, but why should only a five-year-old love it? Uh, Vivian says, I remember you guys wanted to be zoologists and paleontologists. Yes, there are many times we sat in class talking about that. <laughs> oh, real quick, Olivia had a question. Odds that most dinosaurs had blue tongues. <laughs> Maybe 100%, I don't know. I'm going to go um, with 0.2%. Yeah. Just because we actually don't know. Olivia, that's a fantastic question. Uh, animals that do have blue tongues, uh, a giraffe have a blue tongue. And scientists believe it's a real sunscreen to keep their tongue from burning because it's out so much when they're feeding. At least this is something I heard a while ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. Denise, I know you're on board right now. We have a couple of zoo friends who are watching as well 
Um, but I know blue tongue skinks have blue tongues and they use that to scare off predators. So who's to say that we had a, a prey dinosaur or a predator dinosaur that had blue tongues and they use them to scare off other dinosaurs or to make other dinosaurs think that they're sick or they might be poisonous or might have the potential of injuring you with venom with a nasty bite. So that's a really good question. Uh, paleontology is really cool because uh, the best way I can think about it is it's a big old puzzle. The earth is a giant box and the puzzle just keeps getting shaken up. And I'm talking like millions of years of shaking up and the puzzle pieces themselves take a very long time to make. So, okay, Denise confirmed that's the last I heard too, Ben. You're the best. Shelby, the sunscreen theory is a leading hypothesis. All right, I am not losing my mind about yeah, giraffe tongues. Lost part of it, but that's yeah. okay. We'll, uh, good we'll, luck we'll proving it, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Mother. Uh, Autumn's here. All right, I also use my tongue to scare off other animals. That I hope everyone's true, sticking right? their tongues out right now. I don't know I am. You guys can probably hear me tapping on my blue tongue. <laughs> but like 90%, Casey, would you say of this paleo art that we do is just us coming up with something creative? It, you're right. Uh, a lot of it comes down to imagination. And I, I like to think that I've seen dinosaurs before, but then you just sound really, really crazy. But we know that birds are living ancestors to dinosaurs but as ben was saying this is a science so these things are all dug up people put parts together we try to figure out how the heck they might have walked talked roared snorted lived trotted hunted eat everything all basically off of the rocks so just a quick catch up on here ben i know you were quite um on the rant of love and dinosaurs, I'm going to step in here for a second. <laughs> but as you can see what I did with Euplocephalus. Uh, the the thing with the cephalus. Yeah. This big dinosaur word. Um, I took the original image of the fossil. And this is actually by Jay, or not Jay Scott, uh, Scott Hartman. And he goes in, and I referenced this in our last uh, video, he will take known fossils and put them together in these illustrations. And what's really cool is then he'll go in and he'll add in what he believes the muscle and the uh, were in here. And he makes a dinosaur. And so what I'll do from there is reference this image, not only for the skeleton, but for size as well. So like I said, if you get a chance, go to Scott Hartman. He's a wonderful paleo artist, has a lot of good science behind him. And like us, he's, you know, trying to catch up every day with every piece of uh, scientific knowledge that pops in. So I take his reference, I'll utilize that, and you can actually see that I'm starting to kind of sculpt out our little Uplo buddy here in blue. And I've kind of got him in this defensive stance because I would think that that big club on the end of his tail was possibly used to defend against Gorgosaurus or Tyrannosaurus. What do you think, Ben? I, I'm, I, maybe they might have run into the wrong club together. Oh. They're on the defense. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so that's where I will take most of my references are from known fossils, illustrators who have done that, and then I reference them back and forth. Now, since this is a fun little cartoon drawing. I kind of embellished on some of the uh, aspects just to have fun with it. But when I'm doing my large, uh, you know, per scale, per actual reconstructions of the dinosaurs, that's when I'm going to use that illustration as best as I can. And, you know, you send it to anybody who is a paleontologist and they will criticize you. I've had a guy, you know, tell me that all my drawings are wrong and oh boy, that do something to the ego but that didn't stop me i kept going so but yeah reference those guys and you can see i've got these horns on the head i'm gonna bring this down a little bit 
just so he's got a little bit of a neck that I can work with. And right now, guys, I'm on Procreate on my iPad. And this uh, program allows me to use Apple Stylus to draw the image that you guys see in front of me. So what's really neat is I can move pieces. I can come in here and cut them out and slide them around if I want to and readjust the different sizes of this animal. I like this pose. What do you think, Ben? Does I like, like it. He's ready to it's on the defense. That? Almost like it's bringing it around for a, a home run out to center field, past the fences. Got it. So he's clubbing, huh? That's right. <laughs> he's hoping to score. <laughs> you got it. Oh, my goodness. So... Again, we're just going to pop back and forth here. Do you want to give a couple of dino facts? About dino this? facts! Yeah, I think every time facts. you say dino facts, we need to use that voice. Ready? Dino facts. Dino facts. Okay, you got to get a little bit crazier, like a monster truck rally. Ready? Dino facts. Dino facts. Okay, now you sound like you're ready to announce a jazz band. One more time. Okay, monster truck rally. Them. Okay, give me the lead up here. Ready? All right. And today we've got Euplos Bellis. <laughs> Dino facts. Yay! Did that worked? That was much better? Okay, I'm hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get into some Dino facts, people. Okay, so Casey said we got Euplocephalus. Uh, it's a pretty cool critter. It's basically a walking tank. If you guys have ever worked alongside an armadillo, uh, pretty much imagine it the size of a car. And this creature was about 4,400 pounds. I'm going to remember uh, a, a ton roughly is 2,000 pounds. You got it. So we're talking a dinosaur that's roughly two tons. That's huge. That's a big dinosaur. Yeah, that's about the weight of an Asian elephant, a female, if I'm not mistaken. That's pretty big. What yeah. does Euplocephalus mean? So, Euplocephalus, oh my goodness, if I try. Oh, right, it's one of those big words. It's okay. <laughs> I was Maybe never good at you. spelling bees. Yeah, but I could always spell my name. <laughs> Well, that's a good sign. I hope you can't. I, they're so bad. You people won't get refunds for this. I'm. I am not sorry. Okay. Let's see. Euplocephalus. What does the name mean? Normally, I can find these right away. Uh, but Do you want what, me to tell you what it means? Oh, you know what it is. You've had it no, this gonna, whole time. No, I'm gonna let you find it. Oh, come on, dude. Then it's more fun that way for me. Okay. Well, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and I'm gonna. Ask Google. Normally, I'll know what these things mean off the top of my head, like Casey. <laughs> oh, let's see. Do, do, do. Yep, I'm cheating, folks. I'm on Wikipedia, which is horrible. Just make sure to cite it. Always go down to the bottom and cite your sources. Um, Thesaurus? Oh, <laughs> that's bad. Okay, well, it in was... the thesaurus, if you were to put in euplocephalus, um, it would mean well-armored head. There you go. Woohoo! Waka waka. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That might be copyright infringement. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. That's okay. So, well-armored head, as Casey is drawing right now, these dinosaurs, like Casey said, are part of the ankylosaur family. Basically, the walking tanks. Some of them had huge clubs on their tails. Some of them had large horns on the clubs of their tails. It's just amazing to think that these things were carrying around these tails that were hundreds of pounds. You wouldn't want to get in the way of it, that's for sure. Um, and they believe that if a large theropod, so bipedal carnivore, AKA Shelby when she doesn't have her coffee. Yeah. Uh, will easily swing that around and smash it into animals uh, like the legs of predators, those theropods. Gorgosaurus, which is one that we actually were going to have you guys or had you guys vote on. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. 
So Gorgosaurus would have been a predator to Euplos cephalus. cephalus. Uh, we're going to get this right eventually, Casey. Wikipedia is awesome. Okay. Thank you, Shelby. It can be accurate. <laughs> so armored tank, armored head, well-armored head. These animals, uh, even an ankylosaur was found with armored plates on its eyes. Eyelids, I should say. So I guess they're technically on their eyes. But uh, imagine if you're working in the garage and you forgot your protective eye gear, PPE. All you had to do when a screw goes loose is just close your eyes and you have these awesome wicked armored plates to protect them from that flying shrapnel. Every last piece of this dinosaur seemed to have had some sort of armor. Uh, however, if I'm not mistaken, Casey, correct me if I'm wrong, the bellies weren't so much protected. That's right. They had little soft bellies. Little soft bellies. Give it a little pat. Give it a pat. Like roll it over its back. Give it a pat. Well, I <laughs> yeah. totally would. I'd scratch his little belly. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So I guess predators would try to flip this animal over. If they could, try and flip 4,400 pounds of awesome dinosaur power uh, after getting past the giant club. Oh, my gosh. I just had a really good idea. Awesome. These guys should be what? the bouncers to the oh. Cretaceous nightclubs. Got it. Uh, I mean, they're they're definitely. I mean, I don't know what bouncing they do, but they definitely do some smashing. Oh. <laughs> well, there's a lot of, you know. Okay, so on another note. Uh, Canadian paleontologist Lawrence Morris Lamb discovered the first specimen on August 18th, 1897. Ooh, that was a long time ago. In the Dinosaur Provincial Park. Cool. And if you guys are looking at these articles and they're like, in the Valley of the Red Deer River, Alberta, Canada, blah, 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 the fossil, CMNN, 210. They're just referring to the actual specimen, the holotype, which is really cool. You can actually highlight the specimen that these animals are re referenced to. So let's see. Um, oh, it has two reference numbers, CMN210 and NMC210. I'm going to put this in the comments real quick. You guys can highlight it, and then you can actually put it in your search, and boom, it's going to come up with this cool holotype. So the specimen that was found over 100 years ago. That's pretty cool. C M awesome. Yeah. Why not? Technology, give us what we need. C M N two ten. Give that a shot. This is my first time doing this via Facebook Live, so we'll see how it works. But I'm gonna give it a shot right now too. C M N two ten. Holotype. I'm gonna put that in there just to be safe. Holotype. Oh, it's definitely coming up with some. Oh, there it is, right there. It's the third link. The holotype blob of Euplocephalus. Tutus. Ha ha, tut tut. Tut tut. Tutus. <laughs> oh, it's a Pinterest link. I funny. Rexy Paleontology. Yeah. So it's cool. You could go into some catalogs, type that number in, and boom. You're going to find yourself the actual specimen that was found 100 years ago. Now, the crazy part is there could be a, like three or four of these things just sitting around in museums. And we don't know about it because when paleontologists find these things, they're like, okay, we think we found an ankylosaur. And they wrap it up in plaster and they carefully get it out of where they found it, which could be in some godforsaken John Hammond land of nowhere and it'll just disappear into the museum's basement until about a hundred years later when some intern goes what's in here picks away at the plaster and they end up finding this stellar dinosaur that we didn't know about so when you guys are like oh my gosh are they still finding dinosaurs yeah but they've been there I know that recently a sauropod so a long neck dinosaur uh, Littlefoot was recently cleaned up and evaluated by paleontologists 
to um, identify and now be able to catalog after sitting in the basement for about 10 years. So it's pretty cool how it turns out that we have these dinosaurs available, but we just don't have any knowledge about them until they're cleaned up. And cleaning up the fossils can take 1,800 hours, depending on the specimen. I mean, imagine cleaning up a Euplocephalus with all of its armored plates and making sure that each piece is connected, that they have to glue these pieces together if they, if they need to. Um, when we were up in Washington with our friends, Courtney, Jack, Autumn, and Semi, we went to a museum out there and we got to see some uh, scientists and possibly some interns cleaning some specimens. It was incredible. And, you know, people think you'll just find it as like a full, complete bone, uh, maybe like your dog buried in the backyard. That is not the case for like 99% of these specimens. Uh, it's, again, a big puzzle within a big puzzle. And here's something that's crazy to blow your mind. Those fossils are being created today that the fossils were probably around when the dinosaurs were. That's something cool to think about. Think about dinosaurs stumbling over the remains of their ancient relatives. And all it is to them is just, well, another rock in the ground, like a brick in the wall. It's crazy. <laughs> nice. So, um, I, yeah, one day I know we're going to go out there and find a dinosaur of our own. I know our mother and father have successfully found fossils of their own. Uh, this uh, case, Bro's family in Colorado says, looks like a horny toad. Hang him on a clothesline to dry. <laughs> oh boy. It's a big clothesline. Yeah, it's going to be very... Very large clothes line. Yes, thank you, Olivia. Very morbid. <laughs> oh, we won't get into the things we used to do as children. Imagine having four boys. Um, we could tell you stories about us being triplets for days. And I think one of my favorites, Casey, is the fact that you and I and Mitch and mom and dad, and even Jim, we got to give Jim some credit. If you don't know who Jim is, he's our older brother. And he does a really good stick figure. Uh, if he puts hours into it, love it. Thank you, Ryan. Yes, Pink Floyd. Um, but the fact that we can just kind of neuro link to each other and create these things and just feed off each other Kind of like if you were in an art class, uh, getting inspiration by fellow artists around you. It's cool to have somebody there at all times. And you know, mom and dad always said unlimited pen pencil and paper. So here we are now. It. Our drawing dinosaurs that have probably never been illustrated in this way ever in the history of the universe. And you guys get to see us right now making them come to life. And that's my favorite part. So Casey, um, if, if no one's familiar with what Casey and I do, I know most of you are because we love you and we like to share our stuff with you all the time. Casey will whip this sucker up uh, with his amazing talent of pen and paper. Right now he's using that digital pen on the digital pad. And then I go in and add the details, the deets, and making sure that it comes to life. And one thing that Casey always tells me is he just absolutely loves seeing these things come to life. So uh, Jim showed me his stick figure once. LOL out loud, Vivian. <laughs> You're probably the only other person outside this family who's ever seen one of Jim's stick figures. I don't know if he's embarrassed to show people, but maybe we might just debut a Facebook Live of Jim stick figures and everybody will get to experience them. I remember getting them as a wonderful birthday card one year, kind of like getting a fossil as a birthday gift. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, uh, I want to throw something at you guys. Uh, we have a Redbubble store, and a bunch of our designs are up there. Uh, we designed this stellar Bros Brothers Productions Dilophosaurus logo, and I have it as a mouse pad right now. 
And it's cool to look at. Casey even took it and he laser cut it and put it into one of those little LED night lights. And I've actually got it going right now. It looks really cool. So if you guys are interested in even that, let us know. Yes, draw with Jim next Facebook Live. We should totally do that. He's going to regret ever getting a Facebook account. <laughs> oh, good question. So Ryan's son, Austin. Hi, Austin. I hope you're still out there fighting the covenant as Master Chief. Um, he would like to know what the main predator to Euplocephalus is. Casey, can you give us the down low on who may have gone out of their way to encounter Ooh. this guy as a snack? To turn this guy into a snack, that's an awesome question, dude. So these guys, being tanks, as Bennett said, it was probably very difficult for them to even become food for anything. But, so since they were from North America, and this is about 76 to 75 million years ago, that's an awfully long time ago, they might have been hunted by... Gorgosaurus. So that other dinosaur that we would have drawn uh, probably was one of the top predators for these guys. What's really, really cool is, you know, over the millennia, uh, paleontologists have found that with every large herbivore species on a continent, there was a large carnivore. And every time the large herbivore got bigger and bigger and bigger, the large carnivore got bigger and bigger and bigger. So it'd be safe to assume the reason why this guy was so heavily armored was because of Gorgosaurus. And he's awfully big. It's essentially a Tyrannosaurus with almost like two very small horns coming off the top of his head. And these guys were actually part of the polar region. So we don't know if the planet was ice, snow at that time, but we do know that the uh, northern hemisphere the temperatures were dropping so gorgosaurus might have been covered in a downy coat of feathers to keep him warm and that would have enabled him to hunt a little bit longer and maybe surprise one of these dinosaurs while it was foraging for food so, so gorgosaurus would have been maybe one of his top predators awesome that's a really question, question. austin so I had, I had a moment, Casey, I was able to cruise back through the comments and Shelby had a really good question. Um, it was, uh, what's the most difficult part about drying the dinos? She accidentally had spell correct, spell correct, spell check. Well, I need spell check on my language. Um, what's the most difficult dominoes to draw? <laughs> well, I, I think the nine dominoes hard to draw. Uh, difficult part to draw the dinosaurs, you know, honestly, it's making sure that it is anatomically correct. That sounds weird, especially since most fossils are only known from a few pieces. That puzzle against the um, puzzle puzzle. And then also uh, making sure that the movement looks good. So with our horny toad, Euplocephalus here, I've done my best to try and keep all of his parameters, all of his horns, all of his little bony armor plates look like they're kind of folding back along him, connecting to his tail and his tail swinging around. So it's really getting that animal to move and working with something that is has really never been seen in person. I reference a lot of images of rhinos, elephants, crocodiles to help me illustrate these things. So that's probably the hardest part is attempting to make this as believable as possible, uh, even though it's an extinct animal. So that, that my, I'm always racking my brain and whenever they come out with new uh, information about these guys, I'm always having to change my illustrations, which, you know, I'm not against going back and redrawing them, but sometimes you just have to say, I'm done and move along and tell people that, hey, you know, new information's popped up and we'll probably be drawing another dinosaur, so stay tuned. Yeah, so, yeah. so one dinosaur that you guys should take a look at is the Spinosaurus. Um, when uh, it was originally found back 100 years ago, 
Only small chunks were found. And then in World War II, the museum that it was being held in was blown to pieces. So the museum lost all of the parts of the Spinosaurus. Well, it was found in Egypt. So talk about trying to find something difficult. I mean, we're still finding all sorts of things out there. And then within the past decade, they found more remains. Recently, they have found that it was more of an like a semi-aquatic hunter and it was quadrupedal, then with recent remain finds, I think within the past two years, um, they were able to determine that it had a large fin on its tail. So we're continually finding this, so like, like Casey said, kind of updating everything and making sure that it's at least believable. Yeah, it's something that you can relate to. And that's why I reference crocodiles, rhino, elephant, something you can relate to, you can see them. And you know what they look like. So if I, you know, loosely base the skin or the arms or the eyes off of a rhino or an elephant, you'll be able to relate that a little bit better. So, well, Ben. Yeah. I. What do you think? What do you think, Ben? I think it looks incredible, bud. That's a ton of detail. You just basically took a bunch of lines and circles and threw them together to make Stampy. You got it. Shelby Stampy named it Stampy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's perfect. Hey, well, at least we're not infringing on copyright with Jurassic World's Stumpy, I think, is the little ankylosaur that's in that TV show. By the way, you guys should totally watch Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Um, if you're a camp counselor or have been one or a parent or a child, uh, it'll give you anxiety on each level. But as Shelby and I have been camp counselors before, we look at the two camp counselors in that show and we just shake our head and say they are the worst. But we understand how children are. <laughs> or they could have been the best because they let them go play with dinosaurs. That's so true. That's, That's so awesome. true. But anyway, yes, Stampy, the Euplocephalus is amazing. And don't go anywhere, anybody. I We've actually had quite a few people stay with us because... We're going to give you the opportunity to choose, what? thank you, Shelby, it was bumpy, the color scheme of this beautiful illustration that Casey has done. So once Casey's finished here, once the internet has invisibly sent me this amazing dinosaur, we will get to asking you what color scheme you think this dinosaur should have and Shelby's so cute she um definitely helped me out and wanted to make sure <laughs> that the tongue was the right color so back to the tongue thing Olivia oh she said pastel unicorn <laughs> nice yes I love it so again Casey is sending it to me it's actually in my Dropbox right now I'm gonna go ahead you got it. And I'm going to bring it up, Casey, the color scheme for our friends to see. Yes, we do have purple and pink in here. So before you guys go crazy, we're going to open the poll right now. Yes, we're flying by the seat of our dinosaurs. We're going to publish this bad boy. All right, Ben. Well, a, I B, or C. To you. So whenever you're ready, my friend, here is <laughs> Euplos Phallus. Glitter. I love it. All right, people, the polls are open. Now that Casey's done, we're going to quickly whip over to painting this dinosaur. Put your votes in now. Yes. All right, guys. Well, so as you just saw, I just wrapped up that drawing. And this is part of the process in which I will go ahead and illustrate a dinosaur. And it can be via request for people. So we'll have people come in and go, Hey, we want to see this. i am be like, yeah, let's do that. So then I will go ahead and do exactly what you just saw. So I started with quick sketch and then I went in and did the line art. And then you guys saw it, saved it, sent it to Dropbox. <clears throat> and now it is off to Ben to do his part of the magic. And believe it or not, we do always have these wonderful little dinosaurs available. Um, I mean, I wish we did Ben. We should do more of these, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where Ben has to choose a color palette for his dinosaurs. And honestly, it's once again up to his imagination. It's up to 
his knowledge of no living creatures. And it really is up to how he's feeling that day too, right? Yeah. Sometimes so, I want to get crazy and add something really neat. I'd rather than just spots and stripes like animals today have. So um, awesome. the votes are coming in hot, by the way. A lot yeah, of it is yeah. B and C. Trenton B, Shelby can, yes, Shelby, you can only vote once. She's trying to take over the votes. Calm down. Austin and Everett also vote for B, so green. Um, Semi was up there with B. Thank you, Semi. Uh, the Rose family <laughs> is at C. Shelby, stop voting. She's got 13 votes in here. Well, yeah. <laughs> Tenacious. I think they're of dead people from the Mesa County. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it just jumped. We're getting more votes in. This is great. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> Someone has an unhappy face on Olivia's oh. vote. I think it's, sorry, Olivia's comment on Shelby can only vote once. <laughs> Can't rig the system. Yes, Courtney, it is totally rigged. <laughs> All right. Okay, you guys have been amazing. This is great. This is like a war for the color scheme. And so far, Kayla, yes, B, put in your vote, please. Good to see you, Miss Jarnigan. I hope Josh, Mr. Josh Jarnigan is with you. Um, <laughs> Jack says oh, C. But, uh, uh, yeah. One vote per group. We'll accompany a few in there as well for those who are in multiple family groups. Um, this is, I can't get over the comment section. <laughs> no, we got a battle for the dinosaur colors. That's it. Okay, so we're going to close the polls here in about a minute, my friends. So get your vote in. Yep, you can click that A, B, or C. In case you can practice on his drum roll. <laughs> Yeah, right. I know. Not actually do a vocal one, maybe one on an object. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll get to painting this beautiful Euplocephalus. Yeah, Euplocephalus. B for Ben Bros is the bomb. Oh, that's why I married uh, you. Is there like a, a heart times 1000 on this thing? Uh, I love her so much. Shelby Bros, people. Shelby Bros. Oh, my goodness. Five, All right, you two love five votes. votes. All right, let's for go ahead and wrap up that poll bin. Okay. Let me do a drum roll. I can actually do one this time. Yes. Okay, you ready? Drum roll, please. The votes are in, folks. Casey? The votes are in. And? Autumn, we are not changing the rules halfway through. The results are? Can you guys see that on the screen? I see the three. 50-50 for both B and C. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, you guys were determined. And no bribing the judge, Shelby. She's probably going to come running in here. Josh right. says B. And I'm gonna that's... Go, I'm going to say that Josh, he did the vote to win it. Yes. And we're going to go with B. We're going to so. go with B, the green. Courtney says... All right, thank you guys for choosing this color scheme. <laughs> Wow, look at that, man. Mix it together. The poll counters are biased. Listen to this. My goodness. Hey, we set up all these, like, you know, glitchless. We, there's no way we can't count. This is a poll, darn it. Oh, man. All right, Ben. So this is his chance to okay. begin the coloring part of our process. Uh. So thank you guys for participating. We really appreciate it. Ben is getting a kick out of all of the comments being left in the Facebook uh, comment section right now. This is great. But all right, Ben, go ahead and let her rip, dude. Yeah, let me get our Euplocephalus up here. Oh, Got that it. was... I'm crying right now, Casey. Olivia's going to yeah. sue. Oh, goodness. They might anyway. throw your case out of the, the courts. So, we got our little dinosaur friend who is showing us our color palette currently. And what Ben's going to do is take from this image. And so, he's using Adobe Photoshop. <clears throat> Not Illustrator, but Photoshop. This is something that he's been learning for probably, what, the last 20 years? Jack so wants been, to uh... we... <laughs> we have 
two two requests for recounts. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it's late and we've been up early. This is great. Okay, Casey, please continue. I don't want to. I don't want to stop your excitement, man. You're having way too much fun right now. I can't even concentrate. Okay. Focus, Ben. Focus. Oh, okay. my goodness. All, All right. right. So, um, like we were saying, thank you, guys. It's really good to hear him laugh and get excited about this and go nuts about all the comments. Um, so, yeah, what he'll, he's going to be doing <laughs> is taking the colors from the image itself. So, our little Tyrannosaur that you guys oh. voted for. Um, he will be most likely pulling the base color out first and illustrating whatever. So, yeah. As I was saying, he's using Adobe Photoshop, and at home, he's got a Wacom tablet with a stylus, and this is allowing him to color the image. Uh, he'll go through it, uh, most likely select the image itself, and then work within its boundaries. So, unfortunately, he cannot color outside the lines. I'm sorry, guys. I, as much as I'd love to, that's for a different day. <laughs> yeah, but we got to constrain him, you know, within the lines. So okay, <laughs> the fight is still on. Him. <laughs> yes, it is. Fighting for a dinosaur. <laughs> and no, Courtney, I have not had a beer. Oh, this has been without a beer. Oh, That's this is know. hilarious. Yes, it is, Jim. Uh, growing up, we always had a ton of freckles. Okay. So like Casey said, uh, the program I'm using, the setup I have is an iMac. It's, it's just absolutely fantastic. I'm going to actually add each color in as a separate layer. Um, if anybody's familiar with Photoshop, it is amazing. And I use, I've been using it now for 20 years. Oh, hold on, we have a T-Rex and Spinosaurus battle. Casey, hunker down. I'll do my best. All right. I always have to cover my eyes. Yeah. Oh man, it's ruthless. It's bringing back memories. Oh, and oh, the Spinosaurus one. Darn it. Okay, <laughs> okay. Not if it was Euplocephalus. There is a roar of victory. We'll make the color scheme be the Spinosaurus that just won. Okay. Anyway, so I digress. What I'm gonna do is make a layer for each color of the dinosaur so if i do need to go back and edit something i don't have to worry about messing up a different color so boom there's our green look at that actually i believe that's the underbelly color that we're supposed to get okay <sighs> okay okay too much fun so 20 years of painting with it i absolutely love photoshop uh, i have the monthly subscription to it which i recommend to anybody who uses any sort of painting online. And uh, it's only like 10 bucks a month. I love it. And it updates every time they have a new update. Um, I get it, which is awesome. So uh, Casey, I'll let you keep talking here because I need to focus. But uh, <laughs> tell, tell them more about it. Tell them more about the program and what I'm doing here. I'm going in now to paint the layer yellow. All right, so we're gonna allow Ben to focus on coloring. Um, simply, he's had such a blast reading all your guys' comments, so thank you for giving him a chuckle. <laughs> a blast from the past. You guys don't get a chance to see his face, but he's, he is crying. He literally is crying right now. So, um, but yeah, no, like you said, Adobe Photoshop. And right now, really, this is up to him. Normally, what he would do during a coloring process is reference a living creature. So he might pull up an iguana or some kind of beautiful gecko from some exotic place to really make these colors, once again, a little bit more believable on this animal. But right now, because we're just kind of letting Ben go with his imagination, <clears throat> he's just kind of going with what he sees. So he's coloring in the lines. Oh my goodness, I'm very proud of you, Ben. Thank you, um, I try. There, I have yeah, to erase so he, that mistake. And this is really up to him. Everything that he's doing currently is a, a colorist's choice. And it really, like I was, Ben was saying earlier, this is the part where he brings the artwork to life. 
Now, I kind of think of it as like building an actual dinosaur when we do these things, where I will use the known fossils, I will draw in the line work, creating a skeleton, and then on top of that line work, I will then add on the skin, the muscle, the uh, armament, if this animal is covered in bony plates. And so I'm creating this palette for Ben to then start coloring the image. Now with this month's Dino November, we've kept it uh, like speed paints, essentially. It was, a, it was a challenge for Ben and I mm -hmm. to literally, hey, we got one hour, hour and a half. Let's see if we can design these creatures within that time period. And we actually did a really cool little Instagram post where you could see a time lapse of Ben working on the Dilophosaurus, which is really, really cool. And so, yeah, it only did take 20 years, but that's okay because most skills have to take that long. Um, but we won't go back to talking about Jim's stick figure. I mean, maybe it's improved over the last 20 years. Yeah, I hope it's improved over the last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> right but i mean that's and to be honest speaking of stick figures you know ben was giggling about those but that's what i like to use are circles and lines and as you guys were watching when i was illustrating i i start with circles and lines and that's exactly what a stick figure is um then i use that skeleton which is pretty much what the stick figure is to me <clears throat> and then i start flushing it out i know so it all starts with a stick figure um, but yeah, like I was saying, then I'll go ahead and once I'm done illustrating the image, I've finished it, wrapped it up. I'll send it. Thankfully, with digital, it's been so helpful for us. Um, I normally used to do this with pencil and paper. I would then scan it in. Then Ben would have to clean it up in Photoshop. So get rid of all those little erases, all those little imperfections in the paper. And then he'd have to go ahead and start coloring. He might even have to redraw the image so that way the computer itself is only reading those digital lines but because i purchased an ipad thank you rachel i really appreciate that it really comes with a passion and when you guys are sitting here enjoying it that really drives ben and i both to and just enjoy making these things for you guys so i'll, I'll draw the line art um, i've gotten really good on the ipad with coloring but to be honest, uh, Ben brings the pieces to life. And the hope is to take these images and make them available for print, um, maybe to make them little stickers, maybe to make them a book, a coloring book, so you guys could even color them eventually. <clears throat> but ultimately, what we're doing with Dino November is challenging our skills <clears throat> because eventually Ben and I really, 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 really want to create a book um, with our dinosaurs. And that's where I was talking about earlier where I took, I take the actual fossils and do my best to recreate them, make them living dinosaurs. And the idea is that eventually Ben and I will come together wrap up these illustrations that I have and we'll have a full dinosaur book. So to answer your question, Rachel, uh, I, I was the one who actually colored your <clears throat> tattoo, which was pretty awesome. So that was all my handiwork. Um, normally I would pass it off to Ben, but I had to challenge myself. So <clears throat> yeah, Ben, uh, dad brought up a good fact. The tongue should be blue, but we're not going to judge. <laughs> Oh, even though it was a mad consensus. <laughs> if we want a blue tongue, blue. I will make it a blue tongue. We'll put a blue tongue in there. You got it. <laughs> but yeah, so <clears throat> Ben will go in and with the really, really detailed work, he'll add in those shadows, those highlights, and he'll really make it three dimensional. He'll make a, a living, breathing dinosaur. No, you definitely ask the questions by all means. Um, Ben's work is phenomenal. I actually have learned a lot from Ben in coloring. And there are times pre-COVID where he and I would sit down, even now, to be honest, with Discord and Zoom, I can sit down and be working and he and I can be drawing together, which is pretty cool. 
and I'll watch what he does, and I will just take from what I've learned, and I'll do it on my iPad. Now, it may be a little different. I'm not using Photoshop. I'm using Procreate, but the ideas are still there. So, <clears throat> all right, so it looks like, oh, there we go. <laughs> the it looks like it just drank a raspberry iced tea. Oh, we should totally give it some sweet blue warning spots. So I'll oh, add the totally yellow good. in. Actually, we had the yellow in there already, but I'm thinking like a blue spotted mask ray like we have at the aquarium. It's a warning. Do not mess with me because they are venomous. We're going to put blue spots on this one to say, don't mess with me. I have this massive club on my tail that can break your legs clean in half. Maybe even putting the blue spots on the tail. Yeah. Oh, like big eye spots. That would be cool. You got it. Yeah. So once again, like Ben was just saying, we do do a lot of referencing to living creatures. And that's like I was mentioning earlier is the best way because we can relate to those animals. And we've seen a blue spotted liver. Well, those of us who worked at the aquarium have seen them in the wild. And we, we can then defer and be like, oh, okay, I've seen that before. And it makes it a little bit more realistic. So, but as Ben's doing right now is he's, he, maybe Euplocephalus had these bright blue spots on its body, uh, letting other dinosaurs know that, hey man, don't mess with me. I'm a creature that can definitely be formidable. And that's the beautiful part too about all of this is we don't know. We don't know what dinosaurs were colored. I mean, actually we do know some dinosaurs were colored we do know their colors, uh, but that's the kind of really cool part about what we do here is that it leaves it up to our imagination to create these things. I love it, Ben. It looks really cool. It looks like two eye spots on the Yeah. Side. Yeah, the, the, the warning sign on the tail. Back I mean, off, man. And honestly, this could have been a display for female Euplocephalus as well, where the males maybe during the time of rut – their colors would change and then they would walk around strutting their tail strutting their spikes to the female euplocephalus and they would you know maybe battle for the ladies all off the colors so really it's up to bed uh, but there are some dinosaurs out there that we've been able to analyze fossils and read the signatures within the fossils and directly analyze them to squid ink. Crazy, huh? So squid ink has very small little molecules that make it up and give it its specific color. And they went into, it's called, let me double check really, um, Archeornis? Yeah, I think Archeornis, it's feathers. You got it. So this dinosaur, Archeornis, um, was a recent discovery within the last 20 years. And this animal, uh, when it was found, its fossils were so well preserved that they were able to go into the rock work and <clears throat> analyze the structure of the feathers and find out that this animal actually had black feathers with white patterning on its leg feathers and wings. And then it had a red crest. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And that's like and with that's... phosphates and stuff, if I'm not mistaken, I'm using electron microscopes. Yeah, exactly. Way down to the nitty gritty structure of the feathers and analyze it and base it off of known structures, which is amazing. Um, even as a scientist to be able to do that, I just, yeah, Anki Ornis, I'm going to pull them up here. I'm going to actually put them on the disc or the um, Facebook live feed here. You guys can check them out. But the known patterns that are on this animal are from the fossil. This wasn't something that somebody made up. These were pulled from the animal itself, which is amazing to even think that that could even be done. So there are some dinosaurs that we know had colors because we were able to analyze their feathers. Through, so those through fossil remains. 
Exactly, through the fossil remains. Because if you guys so have a dinosaur to... out there and you don't tell us, uh, we're coming for you. <laughs> exactly, I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> so let's see if this works. I get this picture in here. But anyway, so that's one really cool thing that they have for this animal is an actual color pattern not one that has been imagined but one that has been recreated so i just posted in our facebook live um comment section the onchiornis huxleyi and that's the animal go ahead and throw that into your google really quick that they've analyzed the feather structure and found the colors this is a real dinosaur and what a cool thing to be able to witness to know that they have all those beautiful stripes, crests, uh, feathers, and and that's what I'll add into a lot of my designs as well. And I remember speaking of feathers, uh, when Ben, I started drawing dinosaurs. Ben was very upset to find out that a lot of dinosaurs had feathers. Well, it, it was because, it was the way that they were putting the feathers on them. They looked like little fuzzy chicks. <laughs> correct. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, so they. You know, they make these big fluff balls, but feather dinosaurs, we believe, are really, really colorful, just like birds today. And they might even have an iridescent sheen to it. Not to say that maybe Euplocephalus might have had some really, really cool iridescence to its scaling on its body. We'll never know. Um, but that's really up to us to have fun with it and enjoy putting these palettes together and really getting motivated and inspired by you guys and your choices. So. Ben, I think he's looking fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for yeah. letting everybody know about the different dinosaurs and color schemes. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, imagine just dropping a paint bucket and 65 million years ago, later, someone goes, hold on a second. <laughs> right. Um, but they can tell what colors this animal was. Yeah. 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 It'd be absolutely fascinating. So I wanted to bring up real quick, too, I don't know if uh, anybody has been with us in the past or seen our work on Instagram or has personally seen it. What Casey was talking about, how we use re reference modern day animals, um, I can bring up one of our Paleo Trekkers pages of the dinosaurs in detail. So Casey, you think about which dinosaur we would like to take a look at, and then I will pull it up out of the ones that oh, we've boy. used. Yeah, that's, that's we have... a big one because there's so many dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think my absolute favorite one that you've done so far, and it's not because I'm biased, it's my favorite dinosaur, but Stegosaurus. Okay, okay. And and... But let's let's check out our, our buddy here. Once you get done with him, let's let's zoom him out. Yeah. And yeah, Rachel had a quick question down there. So this is a real dinosaur. Uh, are you asking about the Ar Anc is it Anchiornis or the Euplocephalus? Yes, both of them are real. Uh, again, yeah. they're only fossil remains. So we have really not the slightest idea of exactly how much this dinosaur looked like, except for the remains that it left behind. But Euplocephalus is a real dinosaur, just like Anchiornis. So pretty exactly. wild, like Casey was explaining. We were able to find those remains and uh, determine via yeah, awesome. latest technology. We love technology and science and determine um, what it may have actually been made of. And those elements were, were there when we found it. And lo and behold. <laughs> yeah. A couple of scientists dug it up and... Now we get the chance to attempt to recreate these amazing animals. Yeah. I think that's my favorite part. Anytime they bring up a new dinosaur, then immediately, honestly, my Facebook feed explodes when this yeah, new dinosaur mine too. around. Mine too. And I take it upon myself to attempt to draw the new dinosaur, um, which is really, really cool. Oh, and believe it or not, I, didn't, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but I have an actual scientific illustration that was published in a science article yeah of a species of fish that existed much 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 but far before the dinosaurs exhibit mm -hmm. existed 
And I had a teacher at NAU come to me and ask me to recreate this fossil that he had found. It was legit. And it had never been done before. And it just, it was such an honor to be able to get that. And so I have a published illustration of a my Traspis fish that I have been, I was the first person to ever illustrate this fossil. So That's so cool. <laughs> it was amazing. Yes. And, and we just keep doing it because we love it. Well, thank you, Rachel. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, of course. Have a good night. Enjoy. And thank you for joining us tonight. Um, but yeah, it looks like Ben, he's turning out beautifully. He, she, do you want to go? He, let's go with no, a she. I, yeah, this is, is a this is a, a girl who can take care of some theropods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No one's no one's gonna get in her way. No way, man. I wouldn't. She's no. pretty awesome. Thank you, Denise. We we really appreciate it. And honestly, you guys coming in here and being a part of this with us, it means a lot and it just inspires us to continue to create these things. And Continue to follow us on Instagram if you guys want to see more of the stuff that we do. We're always posting things. Uh, we're really hoping to begin, I mean, honestly, have more of these Facebook Live events so you guys can join us and watch more of what we do and hear the silly jokes. And if it's a chance to talk to us, it'll be available. Um, but yes, that we do it because we love it and we love to share it. So until Ben and I become fossils, uh, we hope to keep producing these things forever and ever, right? Yes, I cannot wait. We'll be old dinosaurs ourselves still drawing these things. <laughs> so real Hello. quick, before everybody leaves, I think we're still, we got still quite a few people with us, which is great. Um, we'll go ahead and bring up one of those live fossil, or um, pardon me. We wish we're alive, uh, paleo profiles, but here we have Euclosephalus. I have created job, a cool dude. shadow like your mother looking down on her. She's swinging her tail around. Look out, no, don't smash me in the face. That'd be bad. Stampy, the Euclosephalus, my friends. Right there, take pictures, make her into an Instagram sensation. She's gorgeous. This will be Stampy. tomorrow's Dino November Dino, by the way. If oh, you guys, you guys didn't know that, yeah, this is gonna be tomorrow's Dino November Dino. So I hope you guys are super excited about that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly bring up the Stegosaurus that Casey was talking about, so you guys can see the more detailed work that we do. Um, and as Casey keeps mentioning, as as I always do, I like to reference real world animals that live today. So they got they live today. And what's really cool about these fossil remains is just like you, if I were to bury your bedroom and you so happen to be in there, don't worry, I'm not gonna take anybody out today, um, and your remains were with it, I could tell where you could necessarily have come from. So I'm talking ecosystems and environments. So I like to research our dinosaur friends here and I like to find out what environment they came from and how can we figure that out? Well, uh, scientists will look for plants and other animals along with different clues to the environment, uh, such as a beach or a, a bog or a lagoon and the formation that it creates and go, okay, this is probably where this dinosaur lived. And so I look up animals that live today that would come from those similar environments. And I like to kind of add that. And I like saying kind of because I use a lot of <laughs> those dinosaurs and animals as reference. So this is Stegosaurus stenops. Beautiful uh, Jurassic dinosaur. Amazing illustration by Casey Bros. And uh, I know, tree. right? These are the beautiful lines that he starts off with. So let me go ahead and um, if you guys can see on the right side, uh, I just opened up the colors um, folder to this one single dinosaur. And we're looking at probably over 20 different colors that I have gone in individually and painted this dinosaur with. 
to make into what you just saw. So I have to turn off each layer. I'm sorry, I'm not as prepared as I should have been. Uh, but this is what we start off with right here. Casey's beautiful illustration. So our Jurassic friend, who would have appropriately been in the film Jurassic Park. <laughs> That's okay. Once again, we won't touch. Yeah. And with this dinosaur, um, we have found that it lived in forests, which is really cool. So uh, the vegetation of choice was ferns. So they got that beautiful beak. They also have some really cool looking teeth that help grind it. They didn't necessarily chew it. A lot of it was just stripping plants and swallowing it and letting their gut and gut stones do the work. Um, I also wanted at one point to make this a flashy stegosaurus. So a lot of people are like, well, maybe the plates were used for thermal regulation. Maybe they were used to attract mates. Maybe they were used for both. So I had to keep that in mind too. So it came from a forest. Uh, what is an animal today that comes from a forest? A beautiful it's antelope wild. that comes from, I believe the Congo. And I decided that I'm gonna add those colors into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and layer by layer, I'm gonna turn these colors on so you guys can see uh, the hours that I put in to carefully paint this dinosaur to completion. And the last things that I do are the shadows and the highlights because then I have to determine if this dinosaur is walking underneath trees or if it's standing out in the middle of a, a savanna and the light's hitting it at about 12 o'clock. Uh, you also run into a lot of people who are painting these, paint the dinosaurs as if they're out in the middle of the day, but maybe they were nocturnal, maybe they were diurnal, maybe they were crepuscular, big fancy word. They like only being out generally around sunrise and sunset. So these are things that I like to consider as well. So this is a cool dewlap right here. Uh, that neck flap you'll see on lots of lizards and birds and sometimes really, really old people, uh, hence the name fossils. But I was like, you know what? If this dinosaur lives in the rainforest, I want to give it some flashy colors for the breeding season because color seems to really attract everybody. How many hours did this take, Shelby? This individual dinosaur probably took 12 hours to paint. So right now I've just turned on the highlights and then you can see those there. Here's some of the shadows. So we got the shadows of the plates and then deep shadows so that these plates are definitely shadowed from the sun above underneath the plates themselves. Then I'm gonna put the highlights and that really makes them pop. And then I have another layer of bright highlights so that it's like those uh, rolls of skin that are just getting the sun right. Maybe it just came out of water. So uh, Olivia wants to know what kind of Congo-based antelope you base the color off of. Oh boy, I'll have to go back and I find think it, it was a Sitatunga. Sit uh, yes, a Sitatunga. Mm -hmm. Casey, can you find that real quick and throw that in the comments for everybody, please and thank mm -hmm. you? A Sitatunga. It's a really cool antelope. Um, I can also bring it up on uh, the feed here. Sitatonga. Uh, it has these almost purple kind of rose colors with these white bands on its face. And it has these cute little toe socks. And it's got the rump there with the color as well. There it is, yep. So beautiful, beautiful animal from the Congo. If I spelled it right, <clears throat> Sita Tunga, S I T A T U N G A, mm -hmm. Sita Tunga. Got it. There it is. So, yeah, that's what I referenced to make this beautiful Stegosaurus that we'll in turn throw into the Paleo Trekkers Field Guide to Mesozoic Fauna Tribe Dinosauria. Dinosauria. Yeah. Dinosauria. We got it. All right. And... Yeah, so like you know, Ben's been saying. I mean, this is this is the bigger picture for us is the illustrations that I create, and this was done on pencil and paper, done with pencil and paper, and scan it in. And he went ahead and within Photoshop was able to create this image with the background, all the different verbiage, and bring this animal to life. And really, for me as an illustrator, uh, I just, I couldn't ask for anything more amazing than to see my piece begin to walk off the page. 
So it's been a, a real, really cool little duo that Ben and I have going on right now with the dinosaurs is being able to illustrate them and then hand them off to each other and even bounce ideas off each other and bring these images to life. And Ben had mentioned, uh, we are looking to put these into a paleo trekker guide, a dinosaur guide to the Mesozoic and have these available along with little anecdotes, illustrations of dinosaurs living in their natural environment. Now we are still working on that. And that's definitely, as Ben had said, it takes 12 plus hours to, to color this image. And that's why it's taking so long, but as all wonderful things do, um, but you can see he goes in and he gets even the muscle layers, maybe how the animal carried its neck or the plates were embedded within the neck. The eye, you know, making sure that it has a elongated pupil because this maybe was an herbivore and it needed to see the horizon while it fed like an antelope. So these are all things that we keep in mind when we're illustrating these things. Um, and that's, like, once again, the best part with dinosaurs is we can make them really however we want, um, specifically the colors. And that's why we encourage people just to have fun with them. We do. I know I do, Ben, you? Oh, I, hours of or no, fun. Any fun whatsoever. I, no fun at all. I have no fun okay, painting no, no these. Fun. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I don't have so, the fun that requires me to focus on the fibers of the plates of the, of the stegosaurus. <laughs> Yeah, oh so man! A nice little sneak peek to uh, what we do as paleo illustrators uh, for the larger picture. But it's always fun to step out of these norms of you know literally bio designing animals and having fun with them and doing cartoons with them and just making them very simple. And it honestly helps me, I don't know about you, Ben, but to be able to do a quick whip like we just did earlier really fine tunes and helps me understand, you know, the different movements when I'm illustrating. Yes, I agree entirely. So huh, I hope we've inspired you guys with our creations and our beautiful Stampy, the <laughs> Euplocephalus. My computer's having a tough time here. There we go. Um, that maybe one day we can see your drawings, which would be really cool. So, yeah, I, I, I hope everybody has thoroughly enjoyed this and just enjoyed Casey and I talking to you about what got us into this and how we do it. And from start to finish, you got to see Stampy come to life. Hashtag yes. Stampy. I think that's our thing for this dinosaur right here. Uh, Courtney, yes, thank you so much. I hope you are so inspired. <laughs> <laughs> um, that at the end of this, uh, we might end up having uh, early reveals for you guys with the book that we want to come out with. Of course, that's going to take some time, like Casey was saying. But in the meantime, you can still support us online. Denise, thank you so much. We miss you so much. And please continue to post photos of the animals you see so we can reference them. Shadows and highlights, please, from any time of the day because that is one thing that I need to see the most. If you could do that, that would be great. Please and thank you. If not, I'll continue to love and see your wonderful draw or uh, photographs of the animals that you get to see that are about the size of dinosaurs every single day. Uh, love yeah, you, babies. So like, <laughs> like Ben was saying, you guys can follow us on Instagram, Bros Brothers Productions. Stampy will be the Dino November for tomorrow. So you guys, you guys got to see this get created, and now we're going to post it for the world to see, which is awesome. You guys get the first look at it. Um, but yeah, continue to watch us on Facebook, on Instagram, our new YouTube channel. We're looking to post more videos just like this. And that way we might even have how-tos on, you know, maybe other things other than dinosaurs. Who knows? So keep tagging along on our adventures. Hopefully you've enjoyed this evening. We want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. We've had a blast and we've come up with a new beautiful dinosaur with your guys' help. Ah, uh, and it has become probably one of my favorites. I'm going to have to it go out good. there and I'm going to say that this is probably one of my new favorites because it is beautiful. 
the inspiration of the blue tongue, I am now going to paint in a blue popsicle. As if yes. you ate a blue popsicle and its tongue is blue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, with that, uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. This will be available on our YouTube channel if you want to reference it and watch as I draw. And any questions, comments, concerns, um, jokes you have for us, silly remarks, please leave them on Facebook. We are excited to hear from you guys, and we look forward to doing this again. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> and stay safe out there. Take care. And this is the best way that we can provide you guys with a little entertainment. We appreciate you coming out tonight. Awesome. There we go. Nice little popsicle for Stampy. Yes, for Stampy. Yeah. All right, my friends. Have a wonderful night. We hope to see yes. you again. Bye-bye. Create, so inspire, much. believe Stampy. in everything that you do. We love you from Rose Brothers. Have an awesome Dino Phil night. And on that note, Casey, I think we need to sing our song. Ready? Deep. Ah, Ready? Right. Wait, 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 one, D-I-N-O-Dinosaur, Dino, Dino, Dinosaur, it's going to be huge, it's going to be huge. Thank you, everybody, have a wonderful night, happy Thanksgiving, stay safe, and we'll see you later.